Okay, so now let's do the second part of this assignment. Uh, here's the, the page talking about the assignment. And I've linked, uh, at least on the new page, I've linked exactly where the PDB file is because some people had trouble. So if you, you, uh, you can click on this file and uh, download it, right? Um, OSX sometimes is not 100% sure what the file is. Um, PDB sometimes it thinks it's a um, Adobe file or something, but but there it is. So you download it. Now let's go to VMD, and uh, we don't have to get rid of this other molecule. One of the things you can do though is down here uh, in this D, you can double click on the D for display, and it'll get rid of it. It'll hide it. So uh, so now it's not in our way. So now we can. Um, go to our new molecule. Since this is in my downloads folder, I'm going to have to quickly find it. Um, documents, okay. So here we go. Downloads. And let's see. Can't remember exactly what it was called. Okay. Let's go down here. Here it is should automatically recognize it's a PDB and we load it. So here it is. This is a simulation box of a micelle in water. And it's it's a mess, right? So um, if we go back and see what this wants, it wants a separate selection for each component. The uh, sodium dodecyl sulfate molecules, the surfactants, the sodium ions, and the water. Um, so if we go back and to our simulation box, um, everything's represented as lines. So the first thing probably we should do is create representations for each of the different components. Um, water, there's all kinds of different water models and VMD recognizes the individual water model names, but the easiest way to do this is to just use the keyword water. This is one of the general um, selection terms, we can see if we go to selections and look at some of these single words, right? These are convenient, the ones here that are uh, italicized um, mean uh, some sort of complicated uh, selection that's easier just to use by themselves. So we have a water representation now, we can create another representation. Um, one of the things you can do similar to this is protein, but we don't really have a protein, right? We have some ion, so we'll do that. Now, in order to see if we've actually selected some ions, we might have to uh, go here and show them in a representation that's easy to show, like van der Waals. So there's my sodium ions, right? These van der Waals balls. Let's create another representation, and this is going to be for our surfactants. Now, there's there's not really a keyword that works for a surfactant all by itself. So what we can do is we can go to selections and we can look for um, different residues. Actually, res names will give us a name. And here we can see the three different types of residues by name in our system. We have sodium dodecyl sulfate, or SDS, sodium ions, and TIP3, which is a water molecule. It stands for a, a, a three charge model that we'll learn more about later. All right, so what that means is we can type in here res name SDS, and that'll give us our sodium dodecyl sulfates. So res name SDS. The res name does not have to be capitalized, but the SDS does. Okay, since the, the ion representation was van der Waals and we just duplicated it now, the SDS molecules are also van der Waals. That may or may not be what we want. For now, let's go back and make these lines uh, just for now. Okay, let's leave the, um, the sodium ions as van der Waals spheres, though. And let's turn the water back on. So this is all three of the components with the water as lines, the uh, sodium ions as van der Waals spheres, and the SDS molecules as lines also. Well, let's look at the water first, right? If we turn off the other two, um, water 
is kind in some ways is kind of uninteresting, right? This is just this is just our uh, solvent. So let's make it something a little bit less distracting. You may want to go down here and and use the solvent, but if you do that, oh, I did the wrong one. Let's go back, do lines, select the water, which is where I want. Okay, so let's select the solvent representation. This is really not that useful, right? Because you can't see anything. Even if you change this to transparent, you're still not going to be able to see anything. One representation which works sometimes is the dotted representation, but that's still pretty noisy. Okay, so it turns out that lines is probably the best representation for water. It's the least distracting. We make it transparent. It's not you're not going to be able to tell right now, but it will help when we render. Okay. All right. So van der Waals spheres, we're okay with SDS or the ions. Let's look at SDS now. Lines is definitely not going to be good enough, and you may want to do something different. CPK may or may not be may or may not be good, but what I like to do is licorice, um, and then. Um, this shows the tails, but what a lot of people like to do is they like to show more detail in, in the head group. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the tails licorice, and I'm going to make the heads a van der Waals sphere. So to do this, I can do a couple things. The, the heads are, are really sulfate units. So um, what do I have to do to find those? Well, it turns out sulfate's not really a residue, but what I'm going to do is something I probably wouldn't normally do, but I want to show how selections work, right? The sulfates are sulfurs and oxygen. So I'm going to use a, a, a combination. I want them to be SDS, and I want them to be um, the sulfur, Right? So I can come up here to name, and I can look down. These are according to element type. So I can come down until I find the sulfur under S. Right. I can type res name SDS and name S. Right. Now let's make this van der Waals so we can see if we are selecting them properly. Okay. So now we can see the sulfur van der Waals spheres. Right, they look a lot like the sodiums. So we'll fix that in a minute. And now let's do the oxygens too. Now the oxygens, there's a lot of different kinds of oxygens here, right? OH2 is a water oxygen, but OS are going to be sulfate oxygens, right? Typically the second letter will tell you, uh, give you a hint, is what type of oxygens. OH2 that's a water oxygen. OS with a number, that's going to be a sulfate. So I'm going to say or name OS. And that's going to just take care of the first two names. And I think I want an and. That didn't work too well, did it? So you can use parentheses also to help group things. I guess we have to pick them out individually. There we go. Now we have the head groups as van der Waals spheres. We have the tails as licorice and the water as these lines. Now let's turn off the water so we can see what we're doing here. And we can turn off the turn the sodium ions back on. Now the sodium ion color and the sulfate ion color is pretty similar. So let's change that a little bit from the default. So to do that, what you want to do is you want to go down to color ID. Right? Now that changes into blue. Blue is probably not a good color. Nobody's going to think that sodiums are blue. But you can pick different colors here. And since 
sodium ions are kind of metallic, we might want to find either a different yellow color, right? Kind of greenish yellow is a good color for sodium because that's a halogen. Okay, so now this is really the micelle, right? Without the water, this is really what we might be interested in um, to see. Now, if I go back to the assignment and says, um, show all three components in a clear way. And let's try to determine the size of the micelle using appropriate tools, okay? And compare this to the size or length of an amplifier. If you think about it, this micelle is, is roughly spherical, right? So the micelle is roughly spherical. And if the micelle is a sphere, and if you think about the way a micelle is formed with the head groups pointing out and the tails pointing in, the sphere, if the sphere has a diameter of, of D, then the amplifiles are probably R long, right, or D over two. Um, roughly, roughly. So let's see how well that works. Now to do this, what I want to do is I'm going to for a second turn off the tails. So I just have these head groups making the sphere. And in order to, um, to, to see the size, I can use a label, right? Okay, so let's see how this works. Go to mouse on the main menu and go to label and it's going to give you some choices. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the atoms or the residues, right? It doesn't matter which one. I picked residue. And then I'm going to go to the label menu item, which is under graphics. Okay, so let's look at this. This will show us different types of labels that we might be interested in, right? This will allow us to create virtual bonds. And you can see all this other information here in the window. So in order to do this, to show how this works, let me just pick two um, SDS heads that are about on opposite sides of each other, right? This one here looks pretty good in that one. So I'm going to click on this one. Show, notice that it gave me some information about that. And I'm going to click on the other one. Let's see. Let's try this again. Label atoms. Somehow that got turned off. So let's go back. Here we go. There's Right? And if it works, you should see the green label. Right? And it did not give us the bond. Why is that? Let's go back. Mouse, label. Oh, we need bonds. That's it. Okay, so let's click on this again. Click on this. There's our bond. And it shows the distance, about 44 angstroms. The length unit in VMD is angstroms. All right, now let's take an, another diameter just to see how consistent this is. Here's one here, and here's one here, back here, 38. So 38, 40, I don't know, maybe it's roughly 40 angstroms across. Okay, so we might expect an amplifier molecule to be about 20 angstroms. Okay, so once you're in the labels, um, menu thing here, you can you can delete these if you want to, right? Once you have them, you can either hide. Now, the thing that's not good about this is you don't double click to hide like you do over here in the representations. You have to click the hide button, a little bit different. So let me hide these. Um, what I want to do now is measure the size of a SDS molecule. In order to do this, let me do one more, one more selection here. Notice that in my, um, the last SDS molecule I clicked, it gives you the residue name and the residue ID and the name on all this information. I'm going to use this res ID to single out just a single, um, a single SDS molecule. So I'm going to create a new rep highlighted from the licorice because I'm going to use the licorice representation. Okay. I'm going to turn off the other ones. Now I have this this mess, right? But I'm going to change my selection now to res ID 31. That's going to be a single SDS molecule. Oops, that's not what I wanted to 
do. Res ID 31. Okay, so there's a single SDS molecule. And let me zoom in on it a little bit. So now let me try to estimate the length using a bond. So my bond picker should still be here. So I'm going to click on this sulfur, and I'm going to click on the hydrogen and the carbon down here. And this shows that it's about 15.9 or 16 angstroms. So 16 angstroms um, compared to about between 35 and 42 angstroms means that your assumption on a spherical micelle is pretty good, right? It's just geometry. It should be pretty good. Okay. So this this completes the second part of our tutorial um, showing how to get basic information from a, a VND representation and using just using the labels.